Good morning into our hot and cold climates Q&A coming up. As always, check out the last video, otherwise none of this will make any sense. I wonder why rainforests shrink in both hot and cold models of Earth. See, I wish I knew this, but I wasn't able to find anything about this. My sort of uninformed guess would be that cold Earth was too cold to have expansive rainforests and hot Earth was maybe too dry, particularly in the interior of continents to maintain rainforests. And that's my guess, but the likely answer is that a whole bunch of climate variables come together to determine these zones. Like what was the salinity of the oceans? Does that affect the rainforest? What was the sun doing? Does that affect the rainforest, etc. Climate is really complicated. 721, the Mediterranean climate expands towards Northwestern Europe due to the jet stream being weak. A weaker jet stream means the high pressures during summers stay longer. The rains come back during colder months due to the jet stream being strengthened by temperature differences. So this is in reference to me not being able to explain why the Mediterranean climates went so far northwards. I don't know if this is actually the case, but it makes intuitive sense to me. So yeah, let's go with that. Artifexian, in the future, can you do a video on animals maybe? By the way, I really love your videos. Cheers pal, thank you for watching and I am so glad that you liked the videos. Now, I don't usually indulge video requests questions for all the reasons outlined before, but I'm going to break my rule here slightly because people need to be aware of Bibliridian series on speculative biology. The third part just came out today as I'm recording and it is just so good. It's so good. You, you gotta see it. So links in all the usual places, check them out, tell them Edgar sent you. So habitable hot cold planets like Hoth and Tatooine are impossible. Yeah. Hoth and Tatooine aren't great places for carbon-based humanoid bipedal life forms to naturally evolve, but those carbon-based bipedal humanoid life forms may colonize those planets. And with the use of, you know, terraforming or habs or living underground, etc., they could be fairly okay places to live. How would one maximize the appearance of humid subtropical areas like that seen in the American South? I would have figured increasing the temperature of the planet would have sufficed to create a larger version of this zone, but this does not appear to be the case in this video. Yeah, as with the first question, climate is super, super complicated, uh, but a sort of rough and ready way you might achieve this in a fictional world is to place low-lying land masses in the entirety of your humid subtropical zone, um, such that the humid subtropical biome can spread deep into the continent. Kind of like what the American South is doing, just do it on a bigger scale. You can kind of see the opposite occurring on Earth with the Mediterranean climate zones. Wherever they occur, for the most part, we get big mountain ranges abutting the zone. So that decreases the extent of the zone. So yeah, low-lying land masses fill up the entirety of the zone and then you'll maximize uh, your climate zones. I've noticed your dental fricatives aren't always consistent especially listening to Earth. What gives? Yeah, so two things here. One, I tend to actually use dental fricatives when I emphasize things. So if I go Earth, that sort of th at the end would be a dental fricative. Uh, but in, if I'm speaking fast, uh, I'll pronounce Earth, Earth. Um, but the second point is I had to say the word Earth so many times in that video that I had anticipated that every comment would just be like, lol, he can't pronounce his THs. So I try my best to actually pronounce Earth uh, correctly. And uh, which I should not have done. I should have just stuck with the way I naturally speak. Because as it happens, it just turned into a bit of a mess where sometimes things were fricatized. So is that a word? Fricatized? Uh, sometimes things weren't. You know, it's Earth or Earth or Earth. I don't know. Point is, I struggle with dental fricatives. Would I have super hurricanes that could destroy a Texas-ish size continent if they started from one side of the planet and had no obstacles? Yes, for the most part. Uh, you also need to factor in the warmth of your oceans. That plays a bit of a role. You should check out the pages, the Wikipedia pages on hypercanes and extraterrestrial vortexes. Uh, links in the description. The former, the hypercane, is this theoretical like super hurricane that could occur if Earth's oceans were significantly warmer. And it's like these storms would hang around for weeks and the wind speeds would be, you know, several hundred kilometers per hour. I think 800 kilometers per hour was what's quoted on that page. So it's pretty cool and super interesting. So go check that out. Anyways, those were some cues to your A's. I hope you enjoyed. 
and I will see you soon. It grows.